while Let a song be your style You spit shampoo Don't despair Use your head Save your hair You spit shampoo The Fitch Bandwagon presents Barry Sullivan as private detective Richard Rogue in radio's hardest-hitting thriller show Rogue's Gallery <laughs> Rogue speaking. You know, I'm not lazy, I guess, but I had decided to take this particular day off. Go to the races, you know. I had the racing form spread out before me on my junior executive type desk and was running my pretty blue eyes over the charts, studying to be a chump. Well, I couldn't get anything done on the insurance case I was working on because the John Cornelius Company had signed a fiddle-footed company detective on the case to watch me, which he was doing with loving care. His name was Joe Black. He had a girl named Cleo who was mad at him. He spent the day calling her up and having the phone slammed in his ear. When he wasn't trying to call her, he was telling me, one, what a wonderful girl she was, two, what a terrible girl she was. His material was very dull. Ah, uh, she's really a wonderful girl, Rogue. Lots of heart, you know? Yeah, I'm glad. One second and two thirds at Pimlico. That looks you like You know, there's nothing that girl won't do for me. She loves me. I know she does. Must. How could she help it when you're so pretty? Say, why don't you go away? Oh, you know my job's to stay with you, Rogie. Uh, don't make it tough for me. Okay, but just sit there. Shut up about that girl. Say, why don't you send her something? Maybe that'll soften up that big heart of hers and she'll take you back, the chump. Hey, that's an idea. I'm going to write her a poem. Uh, she's a sucker for poetry. Uh, something like, um, gee, Cupid, stupid. Uh, his dark is in my heart. <laughs> I trusted, uh, but now my heart is busted. Yeah, that ought to bring her right back to you. With a club in her chubby pink fist. Let's see now. Carlos Pride, two thirds and a win at Santa Anita, but can't she go the distance? For Richard Rogue. You're lucky you found him. What do you want? I got a message for you. I want to talk with you privately. That can be arranged. Come on in here. Look, I'm a busy guy today. What do you want? What's your name? My name's Reynolds. You had a letter from Duke Dickinson? No. You know him, don't you? Well, enough to lend him money. That answer your question? Well, he needs some dough. Tough. He still owes me. He's got some stashed in a tin box out in the valley. He wants it. He wants us to get it for him. Go on. He's planted the dough out in the valley. Yeah, get to the point. Well, he's mailed half of a map to me and the other half to you. A map showing just where that dough is buried. We're to go get it together. I get the 2500 he owes me, you get the 100 he owes you, and 1000 for the job. Duke gets the rest. Okay? Sure. I'll take a drive out into the valley for 1,100 skins any time. But I haven't got the map yet. He mailed it day before yesterday. It should be here. Well, it isn't. Drop around about noon tomorrow. Maybe it'll come in the morning mail. The Duke needs that dough pretty bad. He's got himself in a bit of a jam in Kansas City. You'll get that dough tomorrow. Hmm? <laughs> There's something about money I like. I think maybe it's the feeling of power it gives me when the rent is paid. Anyway, this spook shoved off, and I went back out into the outer office where Joe Black was poison penning some more poetry. The phone rang, and I thought twice before I answered it. It was almost six o'clock, and I had plans for that evening. But I finally gave in to its yammering. Rogue Detectives, Richard Rogue speaking. Hello, Mr. Rogue. I must see you right away. Ah, sorry. It's a matter of life and death, Mr. Rogue. I'm afraid. Hey, what's the matter? What's your name? Alice Wells. Please, come to the Rialto Theater. I I can't be seen talking to you. I'm in the aisle seat, center aisle. Three rows down from the rear of the theater on the right-hand side of the center aisle. The seat next to mine is vacant. Please meet me there as soon as possible. Please hurry. Okay, wait there. Who was that, Rogie? Look, Blackie, it was private business. Now, why don't you run along home now and get some rest? No, no. No, the boss told me to stick with you, and that's what I'm going to do. You're tricky, you know. We don't trust you. Look, I really don't... Oh, hello. What are you doing here, Urban? Just dropped in to ask you a few questions, Rogue. Uh, good evening, Lieutenant Urban. Hello, Blackie. Go wait in the hall. I want to talk with Rogue. Uh, Yes, sir. Now, what's on your mind? You know a guy by the name of Earl Reynolds? Yeah, name sounds familiar. Why? He just left here, didn't he? He's been here. What's that to you? What did he want to see you about? I don't see how that could possibly affect you, old man. He came to see me on private business. 
And that's all the talking I'm going to do. Say, Urban, how did you know he was here anyway? I just took a card off him. He had your name and address on it. Now, uh, what do you want to see you about, Rogue? How do you come to be shaking Earl Reynolds down? He didn't mention your name. Is he pinched? No, he's in no trouble with the police, Rogie. I, uh, I picked him up about a block from here a while ago. He'd been robbed and murdered. And that's the first act of tonight's graphic adventure from Rogue's Gallery. The F.W. Fitch Company is presenting Barry Sullivan as star of this new weekly series, bringing you the adventures of private detective Richard Rogue. According to a current survey made by Cosmopolitan magazine, over 61% of those interviewed said their number one hair problem is dandruff. You can lick this problem by using the new Fitch Scalp Massage Brush Combination, available for a limited time in the United States only at a tremendous saving. Combination contains a rubber scalp massage brush, a six-ounce bottle of Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo, and a six-ounce Fitch's new quin oil hair tonic. The rubber scalp massage brush has 86 flexible fingers to stimulate the blood supply. Use it with Fitch shampoo for a reconditioning treatment that leaves hair and scalp clean, dandruff-free. Fitch shampoo removes dandruff completely with the first application under a money-back guarantee. After and between shampoos, use Fitch's new quin oil hair tonic. Not sticky, not greasy. It's blended from five essential oils for perfect hair grooming. Get Fitch's scalp massage brush combination in a convenient carry-home package. At drug counters, a dollar sixty cent value, only ninety-nine cents. <laughs> This was a fine time for Earl Reynolds to get dead, just when he meant 1100 bucks to me. I went down to the morgue with Urban to look at the body. What I really went there for was a quick look through his personal effects. There was no sign of half a map. That's all I wanted to know. Urban put me on the fire for a while, trying to get me to tell him all I knew about Reynolds, but I didn't crack. I left about 10.30 to drive back to my office. My shadow, Blackie, was right behind me. When I walked into the office, the phone was ringing. Rogue Detectives, Richard Rogue speaking. Mr. Rogue, you didn't come to the theater. Oh, I'm sorry, Alice, but something else came up that demanded my immediate attention. But I must see you right away. It's a matter of life or death. I can't. There's a $500 fee waiting here for you for just a few minutes' work. Please, Mr. Rogue. Where are you? I'm at the Shady Glade Motel out in the valley. Do you know where it is? Yeah, yeah, I've passed it a thousand times. Oh, will you come right out, please? Cabin number four. You say there's 500 bucks waiting there for me? You got it there? Yes, please hurry. I'm frightened to death. Well, I just had 1,100 skins shot out from under me, and I decided I couldn't afford to be too temperamental about a sure 500. So I ran down the stairs to my car and took off at the Shady Glade Motel and the lady with a seductive voice. It was a long drive from my office, and I spent my time trying to figure out how I was going to get in touch with Duke Dickinson and deal myself back in on that buried treasure deal. I couldn't tell whether Blackie had managed to tell me on this trip or not. There was so much traffic on the pass. Well, anyway, I pulled up at the Shady Glade and knocked at the door of cabin four. You're Mr. Rogue? Yeah. Come in. Well, get it off your chest, lady. Please, sit down. Okay, but I'm in kind of a hurry. Let's make this as brief as possible. All right. Do you care for a drink? I'll take a Coke. But look, you were tearing your hair a half hour ago. I got here as soon as I could by breaking a few speed laws. Now, before we get social, what's the deal? I'm in trouble, Mr. Rogue. I do... I'll take it from here, Alice. Oh, a reception committee, eh? With artillery. Say, how about giving me a quick rundown on what's the deal? You know a man by the name of Earl Reynolds? Yeah, I knew him, and I know what happened to him. You, uh, you wouldn't want it to happen to you, would you? I don't insist on it. Get out of here, Alice. I'll stay. Get into the other room. Go on. All right, Tom. All right now, Rogue, let's get down to business. You had company today, didn't you? 
Reynolds was up to see you. Yeah, that's right. Everybody seems to know that. What do you mean? Well, the cops came to see me later. Took me down for a little questioning. You see, they knew Reynolds called on me, too. Uh Uh-huh. When you shook him down for that map, you should have taken that card with my name and address off of him. (laughs) Well, you can't think of everything. I want your half of that map, Rogue. I don't have it. Don't lie to me, Rogue. Just give me half of the map. I don't have it. But even if I did, name me a reason why I should give it to you. Where is it? I don't have it. That's all I know. I'll give you $5,000 for it, Rogue. What? Hey, why should I sell it to you? Now, look, look. I had to kill a man for half the map. I don't want to have to kill you unless it's absolutely necessary. Believe me, I hope it won't come to that. Look, pretty boy, I don't have the letter, and killing me or keeping me here won't make you much of a score. Where is the letter? Why should I tell you? Let's face it, chum. Is it at your office? I haven't received it yet. It'll probably be in the morning mail tomorrow. Look, this is not getting anybody anyplace. I'll do the worrying about that. While you're worrying, take a look behind you. You've got company. Oh, now, Rogue, Rogue, I'm surprised at you. Trying to run an old bluff like that on me. You think it's a bluff? Hey, Blackie. Not that gun, mister. I couldn't miss you from here. You better drop it, pretty boy. My friend Joe Black is a very nervous type. Okay. That's a nice guy. Look, Blackie, I'll hold the gun on this citizen. There's a girl in the bedroom. She's dangerous. Go get her. Okay, Rogie. What are you going to do with me, Rogue? I haven't made any plans yet. You'll be taken care of. Don't worry. Why don't we keep this to ourselves, Rogue? Hey, There's Rogue. plenty of... There's no time in here. What? Like the window's open and she's gone. I heard a car pull away just as I came in there. Oh, fine. That's great. Well, it ain't my fault, Rogie. I, I did what you told me. Well, Alice got away, huh? That's right, but we've still got the main attraction. That's you. Now, look, Rogue, there's no reason why we can't make a deal. I'm perfectly willing to cut you in for half the money. How big of you? You have to watch those generous impulses, Tony. The next thing you know, you'll be giving away the sleeves out of your vest. Hey, Blackie. Yeah? You just declared yourself in on five bills, okay? Sure. What do I do? Shake them down. I want half of a hand-drawn map. Nah, there's no point in us working against these central roads. Shut up. Here, here, I'll get it for you. Keep your hands away from your pockets. Just keep them in the air, and I won't have to break your thick skull. Toss me his wallet, Blackie. Quit squirming. Let me... Hey, uh, Rogie. And a nice wallet it is, too. Uh, Maybe you'll let me have it, huh? Uh, after you've taken the map out, of course. That's what I love about you, Blackie. You have such high ideals. Uh, ain't it the truth? I say, there's quite a bit of dough here. Driver's license. Ah, glad to see that you're a law-abiding citizen, Tony. Ah, here it is. A little piece of paper worth 25 grand. Now, look, Rogue, suppose I work with you. Just cut me in for five grand. A little late for that, Tony. Now, Blackie. Yeah? I'm afraid our friend Tony might be a burden. Uh, you'd better put him to sleep for a while. Sure. You mean like this? <laughs> You're so enthusiastic, Blackie. Now let's get him tied up and slip him under a bed until we need him again, shall we? Of course. Hey, hadn't we better call in the cops, Rogie? Well, I didn't want the cops in on this deal yet. They get so inquisitive about murderers. I knew that Tony was as safe as a royal flush against three deuces, so I left them there all tied up like Sinatra's bow tie. I gave Blackie the slip, went to my apartment for a little tissue rebuilding. Nothing much I could do until morning. I opened the door and walked in into a surprise party. Hello, Rogie. Where you been? What are you doing in my apartment, Evan? Waiting for you to get home. You got a warrant? Oh, now, Rogie, are we going to get technical? What do you want? You decided to tell me what you know about the killing of Earl Reynolds? Nope. You might be making a mistake, Rogue. You know, sometimes you need a guy like me. What are you working on? I don't report to you, Urban. Go away. I've known you for a long time, Rogie. You're declaring yourself in on the Reynolds murder. I, uh... I don't think you did it, but I think you know more than you're talking. Look, Urban, I've got a stake in the case. If I crack it, I'll let you know in time to get your picture in the papers. Will you settle for that? You're on the level, aren't you, Rogie? Why, you know I am. I've worked with you this way before, haven't I? Have I ever given you a bum pitch? No. Well, uh... good night, Lieutenant. Good night, Richard. If you have any ideas of uh, slipping me a double cross, forget it. <laughs> 